Let me give you what the Lord spoke to me. He said, America, you're not ready for what's coming upon your nation and the earth. You can't see what's happening because you haven't listened to my words and what they say about your hour that you're living in. You're in a prophetic fog, blinded by propaganda, false prophets, and preachers of gain. Your nation is stained with the blood of the innocent, and their cry has reached my ears, yet you shed no tears for the loss. You support wars in foreign fields, taunting a good cause, yet your intentions are evil, and what you sow you shall surely reap. Buckle up, America. This isn't a joy ride. Great turbulence is coming, and many will not be able to bear it. To my church, stay alert, stay awake, stay in tune, and remain faithful. This shaking, I want you to hear this clearly, this shaking is not designed to break you, but to make you unmovable. Buckle up. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I ask for you to hide me now behind the shadow of the cross that no man will remember my name. But remember your name that's above every single name. Father God, may you get all the glory today. And as we lift Jesus up, would he draw all men unto himself. I thank you for the harvest, Father, that is yours. We present to you this precious harvest in these final days. In Jesus' name, everybody everywhere said amen. amen. The title of this message is called Buckle Up. Look at your neighbor and say, Buckle Up. This ain't no joy ride. This ain't no joy ride. This is going to be a lot of turbulence. A lot of turbulence is going to hit this nation more than we could ever imagine. And we're just in the beginning of it all. And somebody says, well, here he goes again, Mr. Sunday Doom and Gloom. No, I have a message. I have an assignment today, and I really don't care what you think about it. Other than the fact that I care that you do something about it and buckle up. That's the problem with most people who get blindsided by tragedies in your life and you find yourselves like a cheap folded lawn chair in the corner all messed up because you didn't buckle up, up underneath it and get yourself prepared. You say, how do you prepare for it? You prepare by faith. You have the word of God as your shield. You have God as your buckler. You have your God as your strong tower. You gird your loins about with truth. You put on the whole armor of God. You stand in the face of adversaries and the face of your giants. And you take that sword of the, of the spirit and you yield it and wield it and slice and dice and do whatever you have to do to win. You fight. Come on, somebody. You fight. That's how you win. You win by fighting. And you fight with the good fight of faith. And that's how we're going to do it today. So the title of this message is, buckle up. And I would suggest everybody here, don't go get the lap belt. Some of y'all got a little gray. You know what I'm talking about, the lap belt. What does that do? It just keeps your kidneys and your liver when the rest of your body goes flying out the car. Come on, somebody, help me. I'm telling you, go get the Hans device. If you don't know anything about Hans device, go to NASCAR. They look like an, uh, an astronaut. They're all tied into that car. That's another reason why I don't know if I want to be tied in the car or thrown out of it. I haven't figured that out yet. But don't get the lap belt. Get yourself locked in. Get yourself loaded and get yourself ready for the ride that this nation and the world is about to face. And as the Lord spoke these words to me, he brought me to Daniel chapter 7. I want to go to Daniel chapter 7. I'm not going to spend time in a theological teaching. I'm going to bring you to a revelatory knowledge of where we are headed. And you probably want to write this down in your notes. We are headed there. This isn't maybe, could be, someday, not sure, I'll, I don't know. This is an absolute. I don't care what denominational church you go to. I don't care what other place you've been to, whatever they teach you. This is Bible right here, folks. And this is reality. And you're watching the beginning of it. You're watching the very unfolding of what God prophesied through a prophet named Daniel. 
I want to begin to say this wasn't a YouTube channel wizard or warlock or witch. This was Daniel, the prophet. This was a man of God. This was one that had the original prophecy. Everybody prophesies thereafter. I'm going to run around this building, and we hold them up as some saints and some great gods, if you will, little G, when all they're doing is just re-prophesying what's already been prophesied. I need somebody to help me today, including myself. All I'm doing is echoing what God has already said in his word. Can I tell you something? Uh, Prophets are very valuable, and they're part of the body of Christ, but you don't need a prophet to get saved. I said, you don't need a prophet to read the Bible. Now, you may need interpretation, you may need revelation, and you may need current understanding, but the problem with most of the folks today in America, we're living in a prophetic fog because we haven't read the Bible, but we're listening to what everybody else says and, and following their understanding of the word. I wish I had somebody help me. The best teacher you'll ever find is not on TBN. It's not in Charisma or Christian Post. The greatest teacher you ever find is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Jesus will teach you. Jesus will lead you into all truth because he is all truth. He knows nothing but the truth. So help himself. Are you in Daniel? I know it took a while. I had to, had to wait on the pages to turn. You don't have one of those cheating Bibles, do you, that has a little thing on the side? Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon the bed. Now, again, I'm not going to go into the totality of the prophetic significance, but I will show you something as we move along. And then he wrote the dream, and they told the sum of the matters. First thing you've got to understand, if it's a dream from God, you will remember it. And you'll be able to write it down and make it plain. It's not a guess. It's not, I thought so. It's not from Papa John's or Little Caesar's. It's not a pizza dream or vision. It's a real vision from God. In fact, a real vision from God will leave you startled. It will mess you up for a little bit. It will stick with you. In fact, I was reminiscing the other day of some things the Lord has shown me in my life back 30 years ago that are still as vivid today and impactful from the very day they were given to me. That's real from God. Some of these people get up and they say, well, I think God said, I'm not really sure and could be. No, I don't want to hear you. In fact, I don't want to hear you if you can't even bring Scripture clarity to it. Watch this. So he was told the total sum of the matters. And Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven above, or four heavens, uh, winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. So Daniel's in this dream and in this vision, and he begins to see these four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. What he was seeing was war. He was seeing strife. He was seeing chaos among the great sea, which represents people. He was taken in a dream historically to the future, if you will, our history, but his future. And he was seeing the kingdoms of this world in their chaos. One translation calls it the agitation of the nations. And there's no doubt about it. We're living in agitated times. We're living in aggravated times. In fact, I can't tell you the last time in my short life we've had peace on this earth. Come on, not even Christmas Eve. Not even Christmas Day. Peace has been vacant from the world since time began, if you really want to be honest. And so he saw this winds, these four corners represent the four corners of the earth. He saw this strife and this war and this chaos. It's amazing to me that Daniel back then can see what we see, but we today can't see what he saw because we're blinded. 
You see and hear what you want to see and hear. Oh, come on now. I've been doing this a long time. And there's people, you preach to them, you tell them the truth, and then they say the opposite and believe the opposite of what you tell them in the word. Black and white and in red, and they still deny it and say, no, no, that ain't so, preacher. And I just scratch my head and move on and say, oh, well, that's up to you. But I'm going to follow what God says. I'm going to follow truth. This is amazing to me. How could you listen to any preacher today that's promising you a rose garden without any thorns? How could you be listening to any politician promising you a utopia? It's not going to happen. We have people that are preaching peace. Honey, there is no peace without war. You truly do not know what peace is until you've been to war. Come on, somebody. And we're at war. We've been in war since the Garden of Eden. We've been in war since the Tower of Babel. We've been in war since the fall of Jerusalem. We've been in war since the wall fell down. Come on, somebody in Germany. We've been in war for a long time. We woke up this morning and war is going on. Wars and rumors of war. And Jesus said it would be so, but yet we got preachers that deny the very fact that we're in war amazes me today if you're married you're in war you got a family you're in war if you're a believer you're at war if you're alive and you got a breath and a pulse you're at war because the enemy's out to steal kill and destroy if you're a little baby a tiny baby an embryo if you will in the womb of a woman you're at war Because somebody trying to kill you. Somebody trying to destroy you. If you're a little child going to kinder care, somebody wants to put their hands on you and violate you and molest you and destroy you and take your innocence. We're at war today. But we got preachers that act like we're on parade. Everybody's got daisies and tulips and petunias. Hanging around their neck like a garland and everything's just fine and we're Hawaii Five O and having a good time. Wish I had somebody help me. Hang ten, dude. No, this ain't nice. We're not living in a nice time. We're living in a time of war, warfare. We're living in a time of crisis and chaos. We're living in a time of degradation and destruction. Isn't there something nice? Yeah, there's something nice about life. Still pretty little kitties in the world. And come on, somebody. Tender little puppy dogs and calves that are just born and piggy wigglies. All these little things. Of course, God's made some things that are beautiful. But we need to look at the reality of where we are. I'm talking to the church that's dead asleep. I'm talking to the church that's at the wheel comatose. Watch this now. I'm being lied to by your slick-haired Chinese shoe preacher. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision tonight, behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, wars, strives, and you know what else? Judgment. That's what he saw. Read it. Interpret. It's judgments. And the four great beasts, who are these? Talking about Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. He saw these great, magnificent kingdoms. I want to preach this so hard and so loud. He saw these great, mighty armies, these great, mighty leaders, Nebuchadnezzar and Alexander the Great, and on and on it goes. These great, mighty warriors. He saw them tall. Then he saw them fall. He saw them in their vast expansion of military might and riches and Minerals and resources and dominion and slavery, all the things that they had, they were so tall, but they fell. And we in America don't learn history and don't recognize and realize that any nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. If it happened in the future, in the past, it can happen in the future. If it happened to one nation that was great, it can happen to any nation. That turns his back on God. But we're ignorant. We're ignorant in our nation because we think that our military might and our financial strength is going to keep us away from the judgments of God. How silly is that thought today? And we think that God won't judge America because of people in steeples and crosses. Dotted across this nation again, you're mistaken. Just look at the history of Israel. 
And so he saw these four great beasts, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And it came up from the sea, diverse from one another. So they were all different. Again, uh, we have this mindset because we're different. It can't happen to us. See, I, I just want to run around this place. We're diverse. We're different. God can't do it here. We're different. God can't destroy America and God we trust. Which God is it? I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a little confused. What's God do we serve in America? If you knew the truth about it all, it wasn't God as far as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's many gods. Any God you want it to be. That's the truth. And I don't have time to go into that reality. Watch this now. And they were diverse from one another. And the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. Everybody say plucked. How about that chicken? Plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet of a man. And man's heart was given to it. Again, we're talking about these other historical kingdoms. And behold, another beast, a second, like a bear, it raised up itself on one side and had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, thus unto it arise, devour much flesh. Now notice this, in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream was different. It was more beautiful. Go back there and look at that and see the metallic statue that he saw and the different attributes and components to it. But here, this was God's view of what he saw these nations. Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar saw it in a way that was beautiful, in a way that seemed more majestic. But when you look prophetically at the eyes of God and the way God sees things and the very optics of God, he sees it differently. He saw them as wild beasts. See, this is the problem we have when we try to coincide with government and coincide with a beast system. We find ourselves not recognizing and realizing how evil it is and the intentions thereof are not to bless but to destroy. I wish somebody would help me because the governments of this world one day will become the governments of our God. But currently, they're not the governments of our God, other than the supreme sovereignty he has in keeping them in check. Come on, somebody. That's why we put our faith in God and his kingdom and the government that's upon the shoulders of Christ, rather than put our trust in the government of men that want to kill you or rob you. They love when you're born because they're going to rob you then. And then when you come on from the cradle all the way to the grave, they're going to, rave, they're going to rob you then. And then they're going to rob your children. Come on, somebody. It's not anti-government. It's reality of where we live. And there are Christians today who put trust in governments and people and politicians. They're even willing to die for them. And you may even see that in the next week or so of people who are foolish enough to die for a man or a movement or a party. But they wouldn't lift a finger for Christ and the kingdom. Or they're so full thinking they're doing God a favor and doing something for Jesus by supporting politicians. I wish somebody would hear this prophetic voice today. No, don't want, we, don't want, we don't want that. You're messing up my cereal. You're messing up my dream. Watch this. And after this, I beheld verse 6, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, a beast. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Again, God sees it differently than you do. And after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. It had great iron teeth. Are we talking about? Talking about Rome. I ain't got time to get into the vastness of Rome, the strength of Rome, 
the military might and conquering power of Rome and the whole Republican government in which it was. And it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Again, I'm not going to get into a theological teaching, but we're talking about the future now. A revised Roman Empire, if you will. One that comes forth out of that iron and that clay. But notice how these governments and these kingdoms were powerful upon the earth. They had their time to shine. They had their time for dominion. And in their minds, they never thought it would end. Look at Great Britain. Look at England. Look at the vastness of its territorial possessions. When it turned its back on Israel, what happened? The sun did set upon the empire. I don't have time to teach that. But there was a time when the sun did not set upon the empire. Listen to me now. We in America think it cannot happen to us, and it will. I'm reading to you prophetically. Verse 8, and I considered the horns, and behold, there came out from among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. In other words, there was a war by that little horn. We're talking about who? The Antichrist. So the Antichrist must come into power. How does he come into power? Not with daisies and Happy Meal toys. He comes into power by war, by dominion. He is a God of war. He is a God of destruction. He is who? Satan incarnate inside a man, possessing a man, a person, a political power, an entity that will be like no other politician or governmental person you've ever seen in your life, greater than any Hollywood has been or Motown wannabe artists could ever imagine. The popularity be beyond imaginations that even the church folks will believe the lie. Why? Because they don't believe truth now, therefore they will be deceived then. So here's Daniel in this vision. He's speaking towards a day that is rapidly taking place right now in our world. That there is a world leader that will come upon the scene in great power and great dominion. And notice this, it'll be in an acceptable way. In other words, from a revived Roman Empire or a system, come on now, that which we live in today that is acceptable. Listen to me. In other words, it's not something of foreign nature. It'll be something that looks right, sounds right. Come on. And it's acceptable. Why? Watch this. Because we've been preconditioned today to accept it. I'm going to run around this building. Whether it's COVID-19 lockdown, come on somebody, or taxation without representation, or whether it's scandal in the highest places, or whether it's pastors preaching lies and deception and false teachings, come on, it's grooming and conditioning today's people to receive tomorrow's leader. I'm telling you the truth. It don't matter what aisle you sit on, what side of the bench you're on, it's still the same beast. It's still the same attitude to devour. I'm telling you, please listen to me. Put down your little D's and R's and I's that you keep by your name. If you're a church-believing, baptized, Holy Ghost person, believe in Jesus, believe in the Word of God, you better stick towards kingdom principles and kingdom reality and stay on God's side or you're going to get on the wrong side. I'm telling you, you're picking the wrong fight, y'all. I'm talking to somebody today. You're picking the wrong fight. You better get with God, G-O-D, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God I'm talking about. Watch this now. Watch what happens. You plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth. Somebody say mouth. And a mouth speaking great things. Oh, my goodness. Great. You know he's a politician. I said, you know he's a politician. And you know he's got to be a preacher. 
He's got a mouth speaking great thing. Come on. What did the devil do when he was cast out? He said, I will, I will, I will, I will. God said, no. Is that what it says? He said, I will extend uh, 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 sin above God's throne. God said, no, you won't. Eh, Wrong answer. How many times we go into a campaign season and all you hear is, I will, I am, this, we're going to do this. Boy, I tell you, we're going to make America great again. <laughs> I tell you, woo! We're going to build back better. We're going to build back with butter. I mean, everything you can think of. <laughs> Come on, remember the gong show? Gong. That's what I like. I believe God's doing that. He's like a big old gong. He's like, that ain't happening. Come on now, it's wistful thinking, and, and people get mad at me and say, you know, you're so, you're so negative. No, I'm just a realist. I'm just a prophetic person. I'm just telling you, I'm not worried about what Big Mouth is saying up there or, or her, her or whatever. I'm not listening to them because you're not going to fix pollution. Are you serious? you talking about it. Can I just do this? This is all right. You want to erase carbon footprints and you flying around a big old jumbo jet everywhere telling us how not to live. Right. It amazes me, man. Put down your guns. And they got machine guns. And jets flying around them to protect them. And I can't carry a water pistol. Come on, somebody. Come on, it goes on and on, the craziness, and we laugh about it, but it's the truth. And there are people that they are bleeding out of the eyes with, with such, such vengeance and support of these people. But Jesus said, pick up your cross and die daily, and they don't do it. Oh, that's, that, that's just crazy. That's too much. No, Jesus wants me to turn this world over to him. I'm reading to you right here, dominionism is a lie. In the full context of what dominionism is taught in American churches today is a lie. Do you have dominion? Yes. Did God give Adam dominion? Yes. Did he lose it? Yes. Did Jesus regain it? Yes. But not in the sense that the worlds are going to bow down to the church. That's true dominionism. They teach that. They teach that nothing can be done unless it goes through the church. Ha, ha, ha. You ain't read the Bible. They only have disdain for the church. I mean, I, I just can't. They have disdain for you. Why? Because you stand in the way of abortion. You stand in the way of drag shows. You stand in the way of transgenderism and transgender operations and all the other craziness. You stand in the way of holiness. You stand in the way of open pornography and sewage. They don't like you. And it's a matter of time before they take your tax deduction away from you. You watch and see. They don't care nothing about you and cross, and Christ, and they can say, God bless you all day long. I can say, God bless you when you sneeze too. That doesn't make me holy, but it does here in America. He said, God bless you. He's a believer. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. Sure. Watch this. Speaking great things, I beheld to the thrones were what? Cast down what happened to the thrones they were cast down what did daniel see he saw prophetically into the future the kingdoms came down now let me ask you something you ready for this, this is really deep theological and prophetic was daniel right yes where is babylon gone where are the medo persians gone where is greece gone as far as these kingdoms are concerned. Where, where's Rome and this greatness? Gone. So if he was right about those kingdoms and the prophetic revelation of future events that are already historically true to us, what do you think's coming down the road? Truth. So what I'm going to teach you and preach to you today is truth. So if I know that, 
If I recognize that in my heart and I can see these things happening even now, then what kind of people should we be? We ought to be people that buckles up. We ought to be people to get ready for the rough ride. Quit trying to look cute. Let me tell you, if you are on a roller coaster, some that I've been on, you don't put makeup on when you're on a roller coaster. <laughs> ah! Are you here? There were some people I've driven with before. You, you don't do a lot of things you don't do. <laughs> what do you do? Like Grandma said, grab hold of the chicken gripper. That's that thing they put it. There's a reason you have a chicken gripper in your car. If you're listening to me on my radio and you know what that is, go inside your car and look around the head of either left side of the vehicle and there's something to grab a hold of. Some Ford, some Dodgers have them up front. But there's a chicken gripper. Or you can grab the side and put your arm. How many of y'all put your arm in there before with somebody driving? <laughs> Folks, this is a reality. You're not sitting there playing checkers. You're writing out your will. When you ride with some people. But what? Yeah, I've, I've, I've put more holes and floorboards on the passenger side trying to stop that vehicle. I could never have been a driving instructor. We just pulled over in Sonic and got something to eat. That would have been there. Like, yeah, you passed, dude. You passed. You're good. You're good. Get me out of this stinking death trap. Coughing with four wheels. With the mortician driving. No way. No way. You all know what I'm talking about. But we, we think it's a joy ride. Watch this. I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, and his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. May I submit to you, this is not Jesus. I'm going to run around this building. This is God Almighty. This is a part of prophecy in this teaching you don't really hear very often, but it's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about God the Father. I'm going to prove it to you. Now, this is what I want you to see. The kingdoms of this world, the governments of this world, they're having their heyday. They are raping, they're killing, they're having wars, and they're taking spoils, and they're causing laws that ruin innocency and young people, and all the things that they do as evil. But there's coming a day when God gets involved. Listen to me, God, the Father, will get involved in the affairs of humanity. And I'm looking for Daddy. I said, I'm looking for the Father. Watch this. He said, they were cast down in the ancient of days. In other words, God came down. I'm going to prove it to you. A fiery stream issued and came forth from him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him. That's me. Benjamin Faircloth would not shut up. He kept hollering. <laughs> Put your name there. Mary would not shut up. <laughs> well, I'm going to out-holler you, honey. I'm going to out-scream you. Watch this. And 10,000. Come on, we're going to have a contest. Yeah. You ought to be that way right now. You ought to say, ain't nobody going to holler more in church than me. Ain't nobody going to stomp their feet more than me. God's been too good to me to be silent and stuffed up in a stuffed turkey. Well, it's a stuffed turkey. Welcome to the first church of the gobbler. Watch this. I'm trying to preach. Who did sit? First said, fiery stream came from, from before him. Thousands upon thousands ministered him. 10,000 times 10,000. That means you just can't count it. Stood before him. Watch this. The judgment was, somebody say it, set. Here's the deal, Lucille. The judgment has been set. There is a set day. There is a payday someday. There is a time when God will judge humanity. It's already been set. You can prophesy all you want. You can deny it all you want. You can say that day will never come, but that day has been set. There's a day for all of us. 
This is when they don't like me teaching this. They get real mad. There is a day. I don't know what that day is, and I hope it's. I hope that day is when that day comes. I hope it ain't the day before then. Come on now. I want to see everybody fight to the good fight of the end. I want to see us all cross the finish line together. But regardless of where your journey ends, I'll see you at that judgment. <laughs> Somebody. But no, no, we don't, uh, we don't want to talk about that part. That's the part we just, well, preachers will not tell their people. Well, we don't want them to get upset. We don't want them to panic. So you're going to let them freak out when all the kings of the world go crazy and Antichrist rise. Oh, oh wait, 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 I forgot we're gone. I keep forgetting that we're out of here. They we're flying away. I forgot. Oh, I wasted your time this morning. I apologize. Don't worry about nothing this message has to say because you're out of here. But for those of you that may stay, hear the rest of this message. You know what I mean? That's what it is. And I'm not listening, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. I know. I know, because when I taught pre-trib and all those different things, I was like, la, 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 It's like I fast-forward all that until I got to the good stuff. Then I was like, oh, yeah, it's good preaching. Oh, good teaching right there, boy. <laughs> Talking about heaven, man, it's got to be good. But do you talk about suffering? You talk about going through stuff? No, man, not the American church. That ain't us, baby. Come on, we're, we're, we're set aside for parading. Watch this. And the fiery stream issued from him and, and it stood before him. What? The judgment was set and the books were opened. There's a book. I said, there's a book. There's several books, but I'm going to get into that some other time. But there was, the books were opened. The books of life, right? The book of life. There's also the book of, uh, of what was done right and wrong. Book of judgment. Verse 11, behold, I behold then because of the voice of the great, words which the horn spake i beheld even till the beast was slain look at that all the way to the end he's still hollering that reminds me of muhammad ali i'm the best i've ever seen i'm the best and get knocked out is anybody here just hollering hollering running his mouth running his mouth till when what did he see? What did God see? What did Daniel show him? I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. What a day that'll be. I said, what a day that'll be. That'll be a day. That'll be a day to shout. That's a day for beanies and weenies. That's a campfire right there. You say, how boastful. No, it's in God. This is all God's glory. The vengeance belongs to him. I just get to look back as the thousands and then thousands and thousands and thousands ministering to him and go, wow. I didn't say we get to throw him in. Are you great? God gets to. God will do it. Jesus will do it. We just look back and go, whoo, God, that ain't me. Glad I stayed pure before God. Glad I gave up my vices. Glad I got born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb and filled with the Holy Ghost. Glad I kept my eyes straight and repented and called upon the name of the Lord. Glad I'm glad I'm glad. Woo, you're going to run around and shout. Come on, somebody. There ain't going to be no pity, all that poor thing. No good. Bye. You forgot his hat. Toss that stinking thing in there. Come on now. See, we got to get, we got to look at sin that way. We got to feel that way now. Good riddance. Bye. Oh, such and such left the earth. Bye. You know, I hope they were saved, but if they weren't, and they were given all kinds of unrighteous seed and doing all kinds of bad stuff on the earth. Bye. Tulu, see ya. Take care. Take it easy. Take the long road home. Hey, man, come on, somebody. We, we've got to get to the point where we recognize what sin is and the enemy and call it what it is and say, hey, man, if that's the route you want to go, go for it. You're going to follow this dude right in the fire. I don't want you to. I believe in you don't. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to be stiff-necked and prideful, and arrogant and hard-headed and rebellious, go for it. I can't stop you. I'd like to. Watch it. And I, be, I, I got to get back to it. And I beheld even till the beast was slain. He saw it all. 
and his body destroyed, given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, that they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season at a time. Verse 13, that's talking about the millennial, talking about judgment and some other aspects of that. Verse 13, and I saw in the night visions, be, and I behold, or behold, yeah, behold, one like the Son of Man, watch this, came with the clouds of heaven and came where? To the Ancient of Days. So if Jesus was the Ancient of Days, how could he come to the Ancient of Days? He came to God. Verse 9, it's proving it here and explaining it in verse 13. So the Son of Man, who is who? Jesus, came with the clouds of heaven. What is that? The second coming. I'm about to run around this building. I'm going to preach this thing. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So Jesus is coming to the throne of God to be presented to God because God's got an award ceremony. God's got something for him. And there was given him dominion. Who? Jesus. When does Jesus get his dominion? The second coming. When is the second coming? At the parousia. His appearing. Not no rapture. And glory and kingdom that all people. How many? All people. Nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. It is kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I want to run around this building. It ain't ever going away. Woo! No more re-elections. No more campaigning. No more fraud. Come on. No more political lying. The king has arrived, and his kingdom has come. It has no end. It has no ability to be destroyed. You can't vote him out because you didn't put him in. Oh, I'm about to, woo, oh, oh, stability. Thank you, Jesus. Stability, stability. I'm so tired of, of campaigns. It amazes me in America, you get slick hair in there one day. Slick hair, shiny shoe, willy, one day in office, and they're already campaigning the next day. Either to throw the bum out or to keep him in. You don't get a break in America. You do not get a break. The only break you get is the stupid yard signs that litter the whole area. They get picked up after 30 days after a campaign. After that, you get, it's all on television and talking heads. That's all we do in America. Politics, 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 politics. I'm so tired of it. I, wow, I want to hear kingdom, man. I want to hear about raising the dead. I want to hear about feeding the hungry. I want to hear about clothing the naked. I want to hear good stuff. I want to hear good stories. Not nations against nations and wars and craziness going on. Oh, my. It's just I had enough of it. Can't wait for this day. It was giving him dominion. Watch this. An everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. This kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body. I would say so. And the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. And so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. Watch what he says. These great beasts, which are four and four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Again, this is Daniel chapter 2 being described. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's when we go home and shout, say, yay, woo, we're going to get the kingdom. Da, 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 da. Come on, taking it back. Do, do, do. I'm getting mine. Yeah, yeah. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, no, 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 buckle up. Buckle up. See, I'm, I throw water on the party. Watch this. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was the verse from the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth was... Uh, of iron and his nails of brass. This isn't a kitty cat, by the way. This isn't a little newborn puppy, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped with residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head and the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and the mouth that made or spake very great things. He's rehearsing it again. 
whose look was more uh, uh, was was more stout than the fellows, his fellows, and I beheld in the same horde made war with who the saints. Ah, this is where we close the book and go home and eat buffet. No, this is where we buckle up and get ready for the rough ride. I beheld in the same horn. Who's the same horn? The devil, the Antichrist. He made war with the saints and did what? Prevailed against them. Now, that's the part we don't want to preach about. What does it mean? It means there's coming a tyrannical government. There's coming a one world government. There's coming a beast system. There's coming the Antichrist that will be so vehemently against and bloodthirsty against the church that he will rise up and he will prevail against them. How does he do it? He does it by taking their heads off. He does it by the mark of the beast and threatening to not be able to buy or sell, not take a vaccine. Come on, somebody. He, or it could in the future have its colors of the same. My point is this, the precursors of today are just that, precursors. But he's coming to prevail against the church. In other words, watch this. The church is not above ground doing their thing. We're not partying down, taking dominion, as a lot of our preachers tell us, and having the devil bow down to us. No, the church is at war with the devil. He's at war with the saints, and he actually prevails against us. Meaning we don't stay up top in our current condition. We've got to get to a place where we hide in Christ. Not hide as far as in fear, but operate in a different manner. I can't preach the whole Bible to you. But I'm telling you what the end times look like. Come back on Wednesday and we'll teach some more. Watch this. He prevails against them. Well, doesn't it say we win? Yeah, Revelation chapter 12 says we overcome and by the blood of the Lamb and by our word of our testimony, you love not our lives unto the death. Do you catch that part? We overcome him, not prevail. We overcome the situation. Come on now. Is, is, is sin prevailing? Is evil prevailing in the world today? Yes. But are you being overcome by it? No. ha, <laughs> ha. It's prevailing. No matter who you put in the office, no matter what jackpot you put up there, no matter what you do, come on. Evil is going to prevail, but it's not going to overcome us. I'm still standing. Well, they'll take away your microphone. I'll holler. Well, they'll make you go all underground. I'll pop up. Come on, somebody. Like, like a, well, you know, I'll find a way like a, like a gopher. I'm popping up. Be like Caddyshack. Whoop. Pop it up everywhere. Come on, somebody. We're going to find a way. We've got to get under the old oak tree. Don't make me sing that song. You'll find us at the oak tree. Watch this. Watch it. Well, they'll cut down the oak tree. I don't care. We'll find them something else. He had these eyes. He was against the saints. Watch this. And I beheld the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. Are you ready for this? Verse 22, I'm going to show you something that's going to freak you out. God comes down. Do you know that God comes down twice? I'm going to prove it to you in a minute, but God come down this time. When did God come? When is he coming? Right here. He's coming at the second coming of Christ. God gets involved. Brother Curtis, God gets involved. He didn't send in Michael. He's not sending Gabriel. God showing up. My God, I wish I had somebody to help me. Daddy's coming home. Daddy's coming to the house. I loved mama. Mama could whoop up on you, but there was something about daddy. Daddy had an alligator belt. He would snap it into those cinder block halls, come down the road. I knew judgment was coming. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Might have been your trailer halls and walls, but you know pops was coming down the walkway, if you will, or the galley. He was coming to, down the plank to throw you off. But daddy was coming home. Mama would whip you and then say, daddy going to go home and finish this. 
See, we don't, daddy's going to be in the house, folks. That's why I'm not worried about the wars of rumors of war. That's why I'm not worried about Putin, worried about this guy, worried about that guy and the woogly wooglies and all these things that go on and everybody getting all scared and freaked out. God's coming home. He's going to show up and show off his power. He's got this thing, baby doll. He's got it under control. He's got the whole world in his hands. You better believe it. That's the Bible, baby. That's fact. You can play and roll around in fiction and fear all you want, but I'm going to deal in facts. Daddy's coming to the house. I love my earthly daddy, but I love my heavenly daddy more. Woo! Glory! Daddy protected me from a lot of stuff, but Father God protects me from everything. Man, I'm going to run around this building. See, Dad's coming to the house. We don't get this, but it's happening. It's going to happen. Watch this. He comes down. When is the second coming? How do I know it? Read the verse. Until the angels of day came. Where did he come to? The earth. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Look at the context. War against the saints prevails against the saints until what? Daddy comes in. And then what does daddy do? He brings what? Judgment or justice. He brings justice, was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came. Everybody say, time came. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Glory to God. How do I possess the kingdom? Not by my voting, not by me putting in a Christian leader. My my possession comes through God Almighty who prevails against my enemy, the devil. Oh, there may be weeping at night, but joy will come in the morning. I may have to hide a little bit and cover myself from the storms under the pinions of a mighty God and the wings of his holiness. But I know there will come a day when that storm clouds will leave and the brightness of the glory of the beauty of our God will shine upon the earth again. Woo! Hallelujah. A man will see the righteous, resurrected Savior of the world. All these men will bow their knees. All of them will bend their knees. Every Democrat, every Republican, every rich man, every poor man is going to bow before Daddy God. All the pedophilers and abusers will stand before a mighty God. Ah, uh, you say, how do you have peace? Right there. I said, right there. Whether I get to see it on this side or that side, right there's my peace. Because my daddy's not going to leave us. He'll never forsake the church. Then church, if we know that, buckle up and let's do something for God. Let's get on this ride. Let's roll with Jesus. Come on now. Let's go on this journey of the unknown. Let go of the chicken gripper. Come on. Let go of that thing, man. Let's ride this thing and say, Woo, go faster, Daddy God, go faster. Woo! Some of y'all don't know what it's like being a daredevil. How about a dare angel? Because he's a devil. Somebody told me one time, I said, Hey, man, I got this dirt devil vacuum cleaner. Oh, my God. Scratch that off. Well, they don't make an angel dirt thing. Maybe I should just take a you know picture off the Charmin and just I don't know. Some people just get, I'm telling you, you can't you can't satisfy them. Verse 23, I've got we got a new clock up here, so I'm trying to watch this. Verse 23. Then he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms, and shall devour half the earth. No, the whole earth. And shall shall tread it down and break it into pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise. So not to get into total eschatology, there's coming a federation of nations. How are they going to come about, folks? War. What you're seeing in Ukraine, what you're hearing about in Iran and Israel, what you're hearing about in Syria and Turkey, what you're hearing about Turkey and Greece, what you're hearing about Taiwan, North Korea and China, all of these are the beginnings of this federation and this time, not to exclude all the other rings of nation in the Middle East, 
that are against Israel. Watch. That shall arise, and another shall rise against them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So what happens? There's a war, and there's a devouring of three kings. The others submit to this little horn. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? And notice it has nothing to do with the good old USA. That's another topic for another time. It does not, the world does not, prophecy does not circumnavigate and centralize around us. Israel and Jerusalem, get it right. Not Manhattan or Mar-a-Lago or anywhere else you want it to be. I just, sometimes I just got to help people. I don't know. Verse 25, he shall speak great words against the most high and shall what? He will bless out the saints. No, wear out the saints. <laughs> Honey doll, buckle up. What's the wearing out about? It means to afflict. It means it's not going to be candy cane, cotton lane, everything we're doing today. You think that we're going to go into tribulation in the end times having chili cook-offs and beanie weenie roasts and all these things and pageantry and we're just going to march in and Jesus is going to come back and we're going home. That's not what I read and that ain't what Daniel saw. Oh, but if you're out of here, yeah, that's like that one clause. I can't, oh, the rapture thing gets in the way. But just humor me for a minute and say it don't get in the way and it's not truly going to happen like you think it's going to happen. What are you going to do? You're going to be worn out or afflicted. And if you don't know who your God is and you don't know that daddy's coming home soon, you're going to give up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. Well, they're going to take this. They're going to take that. I don't care. I'm not giving up. They're going to silence you. I don't care. I'm not giving up. They'll take your life. I'm going up. Is anybody here? So why are we not fearless in our faith in the church today? Why are we not storming the gates of hell? Why are we not doing the works of God? Because we're paralyzed. We're, we're, we're scared. We're paralyzed. We're, we're petrified. We spend more time on that YouTube crack. And letting these people prophesy and lie to us and cause us to be fearful. Instead of being bold as a lion, I read the book. I know we win. Oh, I'm going to be prevailed against, to, against. I get it. But I would rather be in a fight and swing than not be in a fight at all and be violated. There is a difference. You may whip me, but you're going to know I was there. Come on, ladies. You ain't seen, if you've never seen a fight till you see women fight. They leave him with something under their claws. Oh, excuse me, your nails. They're going to leave something. Either part of your eyebrow. Miss <laughs> Sarah, help me. That's why. Did they find any DNA? Uh-huh, they found a whole head of hair right there in her hand. That's the only thing she grabbed a hold of. Rip. Come on, we're the bride of Christ. We're going to start ripping. Well, I don't want to fight. Well, you, what do you want me to do? You better check out now. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High and thank the change of times and the laws that shall be given into his hand until a time times and the dividing of times. What is that? That I'm giving you a whole eschatology in less than an hour. That's talking about great tribulation, the desolation that causes uh, abomination that causes desolation. Three and a half years of great tribulation, causing people to take the mark and then beheading them if they don't. That's where the church is headed. And we're getting closer to it. To be honest with you, war is, is, is the next great thing that the world will see. It's the great next atmospheric explosion that we're going to experience on a worldwide basis. War. Please don't have an imagination that we're going to pray it away or think it away or vote it away. It's coming and it don't matter who's in office. Quit fighting your brother and sister over this. 
Well, I don't know if it wasn't for that darn guy. Oh, I'm being nice. You know it's the truth. There's people foaming at the mouth. Listen to me right now. And it's like, are you serious, dude? It's been written. It's going to happen. And no man can stop it. The Bible declares that God will put hooks in their jaw and draw them to Armageddon. We don't want to hear this stuff. I, I, I didn't come here for this. I, I didn't. Well, may this be your last time. I can't help you. Watch verse 26. But the judgment shall sit or be set. There it is again. Listen, folks, I'm not doing this because it's fun. It's set. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. I'm getting the kingdom, folks. I'm getting the keys to the kingdom. Well, I already got them. No, honey, I'm getting the real king's keys. Right now, what you got are training wheel keys. You have keys to the tricycle. You get ready for the big keys. They're coming. Well, how do I get them? You got to go through this stuff. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and dominion shall serve uh, and obey. All dominion shall serve and obey in verse 28. Here too is the end of the matter. And as for me, Daniel, my, my cognizance uh, troubled me. In other words, his mind, his reasoning, his thoughts, and my countenance changed in me. But I kept the matter in my heart. The Bible also declares that in the end times, there'll be a revelation of Daniel's secrets and an unveiling. And I think we're watching that happen right now. What's the whole total sum of our conversation today, our little polite talk? The whole message today is buckle up, get ready for what is coming. No matter what happens this week and you hear this, you're going to just hear these things. Don't freak out. Don't sell the farm. Don't buy into the panic and the lies. Yes, you will be in the battle. Yes, you are in the battle. But daddy's coming home. I said daddy's coming home and he's bringing his son, the king. The one that saved us from our sins. He's coming as fast as the unlocked wheels of time will allow him. If you're watching me right now and you don't know this king, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, not an earthly king, a heavenly king. Today is the day to give your life to his majesty. Today is the day to make it right to be born again. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do not wait another moment. For those of you that are backslidden, this message has affected you. Come on, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the battle that's before us because greater is he that is in us, come on, than he that's against us. We win. The Bible says so. Daddy's coming to the house. Father, we love you. Bless you. Thank you again for this message. Let it go far and wide. Not for my sake, but for the preparation of your people to meet their God. In Jesus' name.